Good morning, everyone. So this video today um, is specifically for my parents who have kids who are pre-K and elementary age. Uh, we're gonna talk about the five body safety rules um, because I'm going to be creating a video on body safety specifically for your child to watch. Um, it's the lesson that I do in the classroom with kids. Uh, this one that I'm doing for you is just a little bit more in depth, okay? Um, so first off, a couple of things. Um, this is something that you can print off. I'm gonna hold it a little closer so you can look at it. It's the five body safety rules. Um, this is something that is fantastic to print out and hang on your refrigerator or wherever in your house so that you can continue to have these conversations with your children um, or child uh, multiple times, not just one time. Um, all of these conversations that I'm talking about, about consent and boundaries, they're ongoing conversations. It's not a one-time deal and then that's it, right? It's an ongoing conversation that Gradually, as our children get older, we get a little more in depth and start talking about different things and different types of relationships, all of that. So um, this is something that is great. It is uh, something I found on the mamabeareffect.org. I'll put it down at the bottom of the screen so that you can go and check out their website. They have wonderful resources and tools for you to be able to have these conversations with your children because sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. It can be a little bit awkward, especially if you are not raised having these conversations yourself with your own parents, um, it can be challenging. And so uh, they offer multiple resources and tools um, for you to be able to have those conversations a little more smoothly, okay? So again, we're going over the bo five body safety rules. Now, this is a video, uh, you can have your children watch it with you if you want to. Um, one thing that I will kind of let you know ahead of time is in this video, uh, we are going to talk about using the proper names for private parts, and I'm going to use the actual names for those private parts in this video. Uh, for the body safety video for your kids that I'm going to create, I don't use the actual names because I know every household is different. Um, sometimes that's a conversation you want to have on your own with your kids. Um, so I don't I don't do it in that video, but in this video I will and so if that's something that you know You're not ready for your kid to hear about or uh, it's a conversation that you would rather have with them on your own Then um, I would suggest not having them watch this video with you. Okay, but um, Anyway, so now we can go ahead and get started. So rule number one um, Rule number one is my body is mine your body is is yours their body is theirs right having them understand that each person's body is their own but really having your child understand that their body belongs to them like we talked about in the boundaries and consent videos and if you haven't watched those yet I suggest going back and watching those um, but having them know that uh, their body does belong to them and so if they don't want someone touching them if they don't want someone in their area it's absolutely okay and necessary for them to set those boundaries and to tell someone no I don't want you to touch me um, even if it's with their own parents you know I tell my daughter all the time if you don't want me to give you a hug or if you don't want me to sit too close to you that's perfectly fine. Just let me know. Just say, you know, I don't want to hug right now because her body belongs to her. The last thing I want to do is make her feel uncomfortable. Or if we're with family and I tell her, hey, go give everyone a hug and she doesn't really want to, um, I back her up on that. And, you know, I say, okay, well, what about, you know, waving instead? Or what about just telling everyone bye or hi or I love you or whatever it may mean? And yes, sometimes family does get upset. Um, but the thing is, is, you know, it doesn't mean she doesn't love them. It's, that she just doesn't want to be touched at that time and um, that's perfectly fine and it is more important for us as our child's parents to worry about um, our child's comfortability and safety and making sure that they understand that their boundaries do exist and their boundaries are important it's more important for us to teach that to our child than to worry about another adult's feelings right because something that we may teach our children um, at a young age is 
um, in a situation like that, you know, whenever they're saying, hey, I don't want to give someone a hug, and we're telling them, no, you need to go give them a hug, or you're going to get in trouble, or we're not leaving until you give them a hug, or whenever we tell them things like, or if someone comes up to them and says, oh, you must not love me because you don't want to give me a hug, or teaching them then that um, even in a situation where they may feel uncomfortable with someone or unsafe with someone, giving them a hug or touching them, or teaching them that they need to worry more about the other person's feelings than their own comfortability and safety. And that is not something that we wanna teach our kids, okay? Um, we wanna make sure that they are comfortable with setting boundaries and that they know that those boundaries should be respected um, even by adults, okay? So um, teaching them their body is their own, but also letting them know, you know, like I've, I talk to my daughter all the time about um, sometimes I need a little space. I absolutely love my daughter, but as most parents know, sometimes you just need a break, right? And so sometimes whenever she wants to cuddle and just wants to be like on me, um, especially whenever I was a preschool teacher, I had kids around me all the time. And so I would get home and I would just need a break, you know, with like someone not being right next to me. Um, and so I would set that boundary and say like, hey, I just need a little bit of space right now. And teaching them too that they need to respect those boundaries that other people set, okay? So it goes both ways. Um, so again, letting them know their body belongs to them and it is okay for them to set boundaries. Um, if anyone ever makes them feel uncomfortable or unsafe, they need to be able to go to you. But if we are putting them in situations where they're setting those physical boundaries and we're still having them go and do something like give someone a hug when they don't want to, then they're not really gonna feel comfortable coming to us, telling us like, hey, I don't feel comfortable with this person. Um, so just keep that in mind, okay? That we back them up when they set those boundaries. Um, I do talk to parents about, you know, it could be multiple reasons. It could be that maybe they just don't want to be touched that day. Um, maybe they just don't want to listen to you, <laughs> or maybe they really do feel uncomfortable or unsafe around that person, even if it's a family member. Um, so you can, again, back them up in that situation, even if the other people get upset, back up your child. Um, in that situation just say okay you know maybe give a wave or let everyone know like uh, they just you know don't really want to be touched today or don't really want to give a hug maybe next time um but then it's important to have that conversation later i do ask my daughter you know is there any specific reason why you didn't want to give hugs today are you just feeling uncomfortable what may it be um and letting her have that conversation with me so that she knows um it's okay for her to uh, feel whatever way she's feeling, but um, whenever our kids set physical boundaries, it is very important for us to back them up in that situation and to teach them that their boundaries do matter and they do need to be respected, okay? So, um, number two. Number two is private parts. So, teaching them that our private parts are the parts of our body that are covered by our bathing suit, right? Um, they are called private because they're meant to be kept private. Um, so um, I hear a lot at schools, I have a lot of teachers or principals who want me to come in and talk to students about, um, you know, in the bathroom. Whenever they're in the bathroom, two kids should not be in one stall at the same time, even if they're best friends, or kids shouldn't be peeking in whenever another person is using the bathroom or on the school bus. Um, that happens often, I hear, um, from uh, many school districts that um, inappropriate touch or things like that, you know, people asking or talking about all of that on the bus happens a lot. And so letting your kid know um, that their private parts are meant to be kept private. And there is no reason why anyone should ask to touch or see those parts. And there is no reason why anyone should ask them to touch or see theirs. If that happens, even if it doesn't actually happen, right, even if someone doesn't actually touch or see their parts, or even if they don't actually touch or see another person's parts, if it is asked of them or talked about, they need to talk to a trusted adult. It's very, very important that they know that. So private parts, make sure that they know what they are, what their private parts are, what area of their body, um, and then also that they are meant to be kept private, okay? Uh, so. Number three. Number three is use the proper names. So this is the part that I said, um, I am gonna use the actual names for those parts. 
Um, using the proper names, there are multiple reasons why it's important for them to know the proper names for those body parts. One, um, it's just like whenever we're teaching them about any other part of their body, whenever they're babies, you know, we, we raise them to know that fingers are called fingers. We don't have random nicknames for them or their nose or their eyes or their ears or their mouth. They know the proper name. Um, and so it's the same with penis vagina or vulva, um, bottom, and breasts, that they know the proper names for those parts. One, it teaches them, whenever we teach them like, oh, we don't say penis, or we don't say vagina, or whenever they ask about those parts and we say, oh, we don't talk about that stuff, then one, we're teaching them that those parts are weird, there's something wrong with them, and it's not something that we talk about. Um, also, we're teaching them that they cannot talk to us about that. Whenever we tell them, oh, we don't talk about that, or we use um, different names and we act like we're uncomfortable with it, then we do teach our children in that moment that that's not something that they can talk to you about. So um, it's important, that's one reason why, that they use the proper names for those body parts. Um, another reason why is because, uh, you know, as I said, this month is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and so um, part of the grooming process is um, like something that we do know with uh, perpetrators and young children um, that's kind of like a sign for them whenever kids don't use the proper names for body parts that's an indicator for them that oh their parents don't really talk to them about this stuff so this is my opportunity to talk to them about this stuff and to teach them about this stuff and it may not even be something um, obviously it's like horrible as that, but it could be like, they're hearing about this stuff at school. <laughs> it may not be something that you want to hear, um, but uh, I've learned from my daughter and from being in the schools, um, kids are talking about this stuff. You know, they, they hear it from other kids, they hear it on the school bus, they hear it in the classroom from other students. Um, and so they are hearing this stuff anyway. It is much better for them to hear it from you and to learn about it from you than it is for them to learn about it from someone else, especially someone like their own age who um, maybe isn't taught the proper things. And so, uh, you know, they could possibly be teaching their child the wrong things about these body parts. So using the proper name is really important. Another reason why is um, if something were to happen, uh, like sexual assault, or if something were to happen, like they get hurt there or um, they're in pain, you know, more of like if they get hurt or they're in pain, if they go to the doctor, you know, and they say woohoo, well, the doctor's not going to know what part of their body they're talking about. Um, but also, uh, whenever I bring in the SANE nurse or sexual assault nurse, um, and we talk about forensic interviews and the SANE exam and all of that, it's really important that kids use the proper names for those body parts. If they don't use the proper names, um, it's not something that we can really use as um, part of the investigation. And so, uh, teaching our kids the proper names. The other thing is that when our kids are young, um, they're more likely to listen to us and to be okay with hearing about this stuff because they're young. It's easier to talk about a four, talk to a four-year-old about this stuff than it is a 14-year-old. Um, so starting early, right? Even if it's uncomfortable for you, it doesn't mean we don't have these conversations. Um, and again, it lets them know that just because something is uncomfortable that doesn't mean we don't talk about it, but also it lets them know that they can talk to you about this stuff um, because you want them to be able to talk to you about this stuff, not just when they're younger, but when they're older too. You really do want them to be able to have those conversations with you. So using the proper names um, for body parts is very important. Um, I So I started talking to my daughter about all of this whenever she was three. And something that I always suggest in my parent workshops, because it's kind of like, how do you sit a kid down and have conversations with them about this, especially if they're a toddler? Uh, yes, that is hard. Toddlers are kind of like all over the place. Um, but the best time is bath time. Um, one, they don't have their clothes on, and so it's teaching them, you know, you're teaching them about those private parts that like during bath time, yes, you know, um, those are parts of their body 
um, that are shown, but nobody else should be in there with them except for like mom or dad, right? Until they get to a certain age and then that's something they should be doing on their own. But also it is a wonderful time to start teaching them how to wash those parts on their own. That way nobody else is needing to do it for them. Um, or whenever they're using the bathroom, like teaching them how to wipe and all of that, telling them, you know, uh, teaching them how to do that on their own so that no one else is having to touch those body parts for them. But it's a great time to teach them the proper names for those body parts because you're teaching them how to wash those body parts, how to take care of those body parts, um, uh, the difference between appropriate and inappropriate touch, which is something I'll talk about in a second. Um, but bath time is a great time. Also, the other reason why bath time is a great time is because they're stuck in the bathtub and they cannot just run away from you. So um, it is perfect. They're there, they're listening. Um, but again, these are ongoing conversations. So it's really important that we start with them whenever they're younger. Now, talking to them about the difference between appropriate and inappropriate. Um, one concern that I get from parents often is like, well, teaching my three-year-old, you know, the word penis or the word um, vagina, you know, what if we're in the grocery store and they just start yelling it? Or what if, you know, I send them off to daycare or school and they just start like yelling it? Well, that's another conversation that you have with your kid if it happens, telling them there are appropriate times to talk about that stuff and inappropriate times to talk about that stuff. You know, it's not like a word that we just throw out there. But again, if we don't make it seem like there's anything abnormal about those words or those body parts, then there won't be a reason for them to just blurt it out. Just like fingers, you know, we don't teach our kids about fingers and then all of a sudden they're like yelling fingers all the time um, or nose all the time. So um, just how we go about it is important, making sure that they know like there's nothing weird or awkward or whatever about those body parts. They're a part of our body and they have functions just like the rest of our body, right? I mean, it's something that we talk about, but there are appropriate and inappropriate times to talk about that stuff. Um, so that's one part of the appropriate and inappropriate. The other part is talking to them about appropriate and inappropriate touch. Um, now, whenever it comes to our private parts, again, anyone asking to touch or see those parts or asking them to touch or see somebody else's private parts, that is inappropriate touch. Doctors and nurses, they do have to get consent, but in that situation, even if your child feels uncomfortable, letting them know like, hey, if you feel uncomfortable, I still want you to talk to me about it. I want you to be able to be open about it and explain to them, you know, why this is a part of the process. Why does the doctor need to see? Um, why does the doctor need to touch her? Whatever it may be. And letting them know that the doctor did ask first and have to get consent first, okay? Um, so one last thing about that, this can be, um, very uncomfortable uh, to talk to your child about. Um, it can be, it's, it, it can seem weird to talk to them about, um, but also uh, letting them know that um, just because a touch feels good, it doesn't mean that it's appropriate. So, um, you know, you may see your child like touching their private parts. Um, it's just like whenever they are babies and putting their fingers in their mouth or they're getting older and like pulling on their ears and kind of figuring out what their body parts are and like just figuring out those body parts. They do the same with their private parts. Um, so letting them know um, with that, that their private parts are their private parts. And um, just because it may feel good, that does not mean it's an appropriate touch or that it's okay. The same with hugging. A lot of the times kids think that like all hugs are okay. It doesn't matter that a hug can't hurt someone. Well, that's not true. You know, we do think of hugs as a good touch, but if it's not something that you want, if it's something that you have told someone like, hey, I don't want to hug and they hug you anyway. If it's someone who makes you uncomfortable and they're hugging you anyway, then that's inappropriate. That's not okay. Um, so making sure that they know just because it feels okay, that doesn't mean that it's okay. All right. Uh, especially if it makes them feel unsafe or uncomfortable. So number four is no secrets. Um, I will do another lesson on good secrets versus bad secrets. Secrets are super tricky. Um, I don't really like to, I'd like to tell my daughter, you know, we don't keep secrets. Um, there's surprises and then there's secrets. Um, with secrets, uh, it just, 
the line can get blurred of what's okay and what's not okay. So a surprise is more, um, you know, everyone's gonna find out about it, and then a secret is nobody's gonna find out about it. So my daughter and I, we don't really do secrets, um, but with the body safety aspect of it, what I always tell my students and what you should always tell your children is whenever it comes to body touch, any type of body touch, I don't care what type of body touch it is, no one should be asking them to keep it a secret. That's very important that they know that um, because they need to stop and think about why would someone ask them to keep it a secret? Even if it's a hug, why would someone ask them to keep that a secret, right? So um, number one rule with the secrets is whenever it comes to body touch, I do not care what type of body touch it is, no one should be asking you to keep it a secret, even if it's a family member, even if it's a trusted adult, um, even if it's a best friend, no one should be asking you to keep that a secret. It is not okay. That's not something that should be kept a secret, okay? Um, so that's number four. Number five is the circle of trust, which is, again, if you haven't watched any of the other videos, I do um, have a video on the circle of trust already, but making sure that your child knows who they can talk to, uh, especially whenever it comes to this stuff, um, if something were to happen, um, whether it's, you know, now or later or as they're older or as an adult or whatever, that they know who they can talk to. But especially right now when they're younger, um, that they have adults that they can talk to. And you, you want to be in that circle. You, you know, hopefully are in that circle. Um, and so build that circle with them. Find out who their five trusted adults are that way if anything were to happen or if they ever just feel uncomfortable even if nothing's happened but if they feel uncomfortable or unsafe that they can talk to you about this stuff and again if your child asks questions because they're going they're going to ask questions um, they're going to ask really awkward questions stop and think before you uh, answer or respond um, instead of just reacting because how we respond and how we react it does teach our kids a lot about the things that they can come to us about and then the things that they can't come to us about and as far as stuff that's happening with their body, um, we want to be one of those people that they can come to and that they can talk to. Um, you know, I've even told my daughter with some of the more uncomfortable stuff, like, A, it might seem like I'm a little bit uncomfortable with this conversation, but I'm really glad that you asked me about it and we're gonna talk about it. Like, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about it, okay? Um, that way she knows that Yes, some things are uncomfortable to talk about, but that doesn't mean we don't talk about them. And she can come to me and talk to, to me about it. Um, and we'll feel awkward and uncomfortable together, but we'll get through it, right? Um, and then, so the last thing I will say with this is, uh, if your child is asking questions about like their penis or um, other private parts um, in the grocery store, because that could happen where they just like ask a question and blurt it out in the grocery line, my daughter did that once. Um, uh, <laughs> If you tell them, I mean, you can talk to them about it right then and there, all up to you. Um, but if you're more comfortable with talking to them about it in the car or at home, let them know like, hey, you know, this isn't really the place where we can talk about this, um, but we can talk about it at home or we can talk about it when we get in the car. If you tell your child that, follow through. Make sure that you follow through with that and that you do actually have that conversation. That way they know that um, you're not just kind of like blowing it off and again they know like these are conversations that you can have um it's just there's going to be appropriate places and inappropriate places and that's part of like just learning that um so following through with all of that um again if y'all have any questions please feel free uh call us email us message us through facebook leave a comment um, if there's something else uh, that you want to know about with the body safety rules or other resources or tools that are available, um, just comment and let me know. And I think that's it. Okay, guys. Um, I will see y'all later. I hope y'all have a great week and stay safe and healthy. Bye.